T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. Coach on Fire Radio. I am the Well, hello there, my business owning entrepreneurial friends. It's Jason with us here live with the Profit Leavers Radio Show on Coach on Fire Radio. Thanks very much for listening in today. I hope you've had a great day. I'm always very, very happy to be doing this show for you. We have great guests and great topics to help you all with growing more profitable businesses, making it all a lot more worthwhile. We've got some housekeeping items before we get into the main part of today's show, which is going to be talking with my special guest today, Sarah Massey. Sarah is going to be talking to us about the importance of having not only a strong brand visual identity, but also why becoming known for something specific helps to create more profitability. So really looking forward to today's show, and I've got loads of questions for Sarah. But before we get to her, um, just a little bit of housekeeping, as I say. So for our new listeners, Profit Leavers Radio Show is brought to you by Coach on Fire Radio. It's a fortnightly show which airs at midday PST, 3 p.m. EST and 8 p.m. GMT. Um, and that's on a Monday. And so our next show after this one will be Monday, September the 17th um, at the same time. You can subscribe to the podcast through iTunes, Spotify or iHeartRadio. And you can obviously catch up on past episodes there as well. And obviously get yourself subscribed so that you are always informed about the new episodes which are released. So you can catch me on social media, on my Facebook page and on my Twitter and Instagram accounts, all of which are at Jason A. Withers. Um, on my Facebook page, you can also find my group, The Profit Leavers, which is a free access group. So for those of you that haven't met me before, I'm a profit growth strategist, profit mentor, profit maker and profit transformer for both entrepreneurs and online owner managed businesses. I'm a profit first professional coach and that helps people take the stress out of cash flow management and making profit um, in their life. So all good stuff, less stress, more profit. What's not to like? I help ambitious online entrepreneurs and owner managed businesses just like you to live and love a more profitable existence. So hopefully that's going to translate to a more fulfilling life for you, more time and freedom to do more of the things you want to do. However, important to me is that we do it simply, we do it efficiently and we do it together. So in the coming weeks, I'll be continuing to interview a series of guests who will help us create more profitable businesses, sharing their expertise. And more importantly, how to utilize that expertise so that we can generate more profit in our businesses. So through the remainder of 2018, we've got copywriters, web experts, life coaches, system geeks and marketing mavens all lined up to come and talk to us and bring the best of what they have to offer. And that is also going to help give us the lowdown on how we can leverage more of those skills in our businesses and create that profitable business that we all crave. So I believe that profit is the commercial imperative that we're all chasing down and it is the commercial non-negotiable. Why is that? Because profit gives us choices in life. More profit gives us more freedom, which gives us more choice, which allows us to make a deeper impact. And that's both personally in our businesses and socially as well, of course. So the process should be simple and I want it to be simple for you too. So let's get on with today's show and discover how we can help make our businesses more profitable by addressing today's selection of topics which are going to encompass branding, brand clarity and the branding journey overall. My special guest is Sarah Massey. Sarah is the owner of Bracken House Branding, a boutique design studio that offers upscale brand strategy and design for service-based experts and thought leaders in the online entrepreneurial space. In addition to her one-to-one client work, Sarah also runs a membership program which is brand new for 2018, Simple Brand Academy. And in there, she offers step-by-step lessons, trainings, and mentorship for early-stage female entrepreneurs who want to learn how to design their own authentic brand and online presence. Now, with over 12 years of online business, branding, and web design experience, plus a bachelor's degree in marketing, and extensive entrepreneurial history, Sarah truly brings an extra boost of business and branding expertise to every project that she takes on. And I'm sure she's going to dispel loads of great knowledge bombs for us today on the show as well. When Sarah isn't working, she enjoys spending time with her husband, four boys, and their sweet pup, Mabel. So for all you dog mum lovers out there, listen in. Sarah's probably got some great tips around running your business with wildlife and young boys in tow. 
So you can connect with Sarah through her website, brackenhousebranding.com, and we'll be posting all of Sarah's social profiles on the replay for you too, so you can get connected to her and follow up with, uh, with Sarah on the back of today's show. So in today's show, Sarah's going to be talking to us about brand clarity and why having a mood board is the critical first step to any branding project, why niching down and breaking down to something that improves profitability, why all entrepreneurs should understand the basics of creating their own brand identity. Sarah's also going to share with us her own methodology, five stages of the branding journey and how we can leverage that to make bank, which all sounds great to me. So in addition today, I'd also like to tap into Sarah's recent membership launches to get her take on how branding has helped to attract members into that program. And we might just be lucky enough to pick on some additional knowledge from Sarah around that membership experience too, for anybody thinking about starting memberships in the coming months or indeed into next year. So we can work hard for our profit or we can choose to learn how to make profit in the most efficient way for our business. So I don't know about you, Sarah, but I've yet to meet an entrepreneur that doesn't want to know more about how to make a bigger profit whilst enjoying more time freedom and less and a less problematic life. So given that we are all trying to captivate our audiences with great communication, both visual, written and spoken, the art of designing compelling visuals to create that initial stop scrolling moment is kind of fundamental to all that, I think. How about you? What's your take on all that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, thanks for having me here, Jason. I'm excited to be you're here. You're welcome. Delighted you're here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, just being in the online space for so long, I've seen, you know, you, you can see when someone has their brand and their visuals kind of locked down and, and solidified, it just creates a much more compelling experience, it captivates their audience, and it really helps that um, entrepreneur or small business to connect with whomever they're trying to connect with. So getting, you know, getting really clear on how you want your audience to feel when they experience your brand, I think is the first critical step in creating your brand. As you say, the, um, the stop scrolling moment, it's something that we're all fighting with day in, day out, whichever platform you're on. Um, there is that that moment where everybody seems to be searching almost for the holy grail of the thing that will make someone stop. And clearly there are plenty of theories around that. But I think having that consistent identity must help people recognize and familiarize themselves with what they are seeing in their feed on a regular basis. So I'm really looking forward to digging into that in more detail with you today. So before we get into some of that, Sarah, um, I just wonder if you could could share with us, please, what is it about you as an entrepreneurially minded business person? What, what are the listeners going to get to know about you today? Really, I, I guess I'm, I'm opening the floor to you to say, tell us why you're awesome, Sarah, what you do. Um, yeah, well, I have been, because I've been online for so many years, I have worked with so many different brands and I've really been able to develop a, uh, the ability to you know, listen to people, listen to my clients, listen to my audience and help them to figure out what is their expertise? What is that one big thing that they want to be known for? And a lot of times people can't even tell because it's like they're, you know, they're inside of, they're too inside of their whole ideas and they're too in their head. So um, having that, you know, perspective from, from someone on the outside and I can, you know, just help them with probing questions and dig out what that, what that, you know, one authentic thing is that they, really should be doing and how they should be moved move forward with their branding. Yeah, that's interesting. I've got a question actually, which is which we'll get to a little bit later on for you. And I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it now maybe, which is which is really around the idea about how um, we tend to find it easier to work on other people's businesses rather than our own. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come back to that a little bit later for you, because I'd love to know how you set aside and actually break down exactly what you've said for yourself, Mm -hmm. given that visual pressure to to create and people are expecting you to create for them from a client perspective, how you actually manage to achieve that for yourself. So that's going to be an interesting thing to talk about a little bit later on. I'd like to start out though, by um, just talking a little bit about, um, about, the entrepreneurial world, as you say, you've been in it and around it for, for a long period of time now. Um, what was the catalyst for you to, to sort of make that leap? Um, what are people going to take inspiration from, from your journey through that entrepreneurial piece today? 
Um, yeah, I mean, the catalyst for me was to, for, to have that freedom and to be able to be home with my kids. As you, as you mentioned, I have four boys. So um, for me to go into work every day and have to you know, deal with the two people going to work every day was just not going to work. So, um, you know, how it all started for me wasn't, I didn't, I never knew that I was going to go into branding and be a designer and be, and do what I'm doing now. But I did know that I wanted to be home and I wanted to, you know, work to do some sort of entrepreneurial thing from home. Um, so I tried many different businesses, all different um, blogging, product creation, and then somehow I got into design. And I think actually as um, being in blogging, I got to you know, start playing around with designing and creating websites and fidgeting with um, CSS and coding and all of that for websites. And little by little, I realized that I had more and more people asking me for help. How did you do that? How, you know, help me create my brand. And I started attracting a lot more mom entrepreneurs who were trying to do the same thing. So it just kind of evolved into this um, graphic designer role, which then, you know, the more, you know, I kept designing and designing, but then I wanted to learn more about branding and like intentional branding and yeah. And we can't just create something for the sake of creating a design. We need to be speaking to the people that we want to speak to, you know, our ideal audience. And so just, you know, over the years, learned more and more about that and honed in on my process. And now um, I feel like I've really got a strong process that I take my one-on-one clients through. And now I, I can teach other entrepreneurs how to do that. Because, you know, as you know, there's only so much time in the day and I can only work for so many times. But I want to help everybody. So, yeah. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's trying to work out the best ways that we can provide the right levels of service to as many people as we, as we want to provide service to. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd like to just tap into, um, into, into a quote that you shared with me recently. Um, it says, People don't always remember what you say or even what you do, but they will always remember how you made them feel, which is a quote from Mayor Angelou. Now, with that in mind, um, I think that that is, it is that moment where we are trying to um, empower people to have that moment in time where they can develop something where through a visual aesthetic, through the design, through their brand identity, they manage to come up with a thing that does make people stop, that does create um, an emotive reaction within people, be that love it or hate it, um, Mm -hmm. but it creates a response. Um, And and I think that within what you've just described there, it's something that we do, that we really have to tap into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, that's one of the main things that I, when I'm working with my branding clients, mostly, um, when I'm helping people to create their own brand, usually when I'm designing for someone, I can tap into all of that and, and figure out those feelings and figure out that overall brand vibe. But when I'm working with people who are trying to figure out their own and trying to create their own branding, that's like the big question that people don't seem to grasp right right away. And that is, it doesn't matter what you're selling or what you're doing. It's, it's, it's the feeling that you, if you can connect with your clients and your audience on a feeling level, and if they can resonate with you and feel positive and feel energized by being around you, that's really what your brand is all about. And it's, you know, it's that overall feeling and it's, it's the words on your website. It's the colors on your website. It's, it's your look, you know, it's all of those things combined, but they all work together to create that brand feeling. And I think, people, if they can just get clear on how they want others to feel, then everything else starts to make a lot more sense. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the transition there is it sort of goes from seeing to feeling. As mm-hmm. we think about it as being um, a very visual piece of interaction, it mm-hmm. actually, we're really not, we're not after the visual aesthetic. We're after the feeling and the positive feeling that comes right. from what we see. Right, right. Because that's, I mean, how do we want people to feel when they are working with us? We want to, we have to create a brand that looks a certain way and sounds a certain way and and acts a certain way so that when they are actually working with us, they know what to expect. They know the feeling that they're going to get. Like when we work together, they're going to, they already have already experienced that feeling just 
before they've even come into your radar and before they've even become a client. So you want to give them a little preview about, you know, how, how is it going to feel to work with me?